lovely shot of my ceiling there for a second. Uh, I hope this is working. 27th time's the charm, right? Uh, hey, there it is. And it's looking at the desk and it's in the right frame thing. Okay, don't mind this. This is just my stand that's fallen apart. Okay, so today I am working on a blanket. Um, it's a design that will be coming up soon for testing. I need some more of that color. I'm just going to bring my yarn closer. Anyway, oh, the color on my screen isn't showing this very well. It's more of a brown tan color. So the first thing I'm going to do is find my end. So I pulled the outside end out. Okay, I just pull a little bit there so I can wrap it loosely around and just tuck that end in. Now I'm going to go in, this is the side I pulled the uh, end out of. So I'm going to go to the other end and open it up carefully. All right, and then reach in with my thumb and finger and pull out some. That's not too bad. So now I'm just going to loosely hold, yeah, that's going to knot, just sort of loosely holding on to this and uh, uh, this one spot. Okay. Wow. Almost got it. Anyway, I, uh, I didn't actually advertise this live stream anywhere, so anybody who comes is going to be, you know, YouTube told them. And uh, so I don't actually plan on covering anything new today, although if there are questions from the chat, I will try to answer them. As some of you may know already, I'm having trouble with my computer, and it's not letting me edit videos at this time. Wow, this is really annoying. I don't usually have this much trouble with the end. I'm guessing it's because I'm on camera. All right, pull that end out. Uh, the yarn I'm using today is Loops and Threads Impeccable. It's the kind of yarn that I'm planning on switching my main stash over from. My main stash used to be Karen Simply Soft and Bernat Satin, and sometimes Red Heart Soft. And uh, I've just been upset with the the quality of of the Karen Simply Soft lately. I mean, every before every now and again you'd get knots, and I mean it was par for the course. It was annoying, but you know you get one knot in a three hundred and fifteen yard skein of yarn. It's not the end of the world. It's two more ends to weave in because I always cut those out. And uh, yeah, but I noticed they were starting to have these sections of the yarn that were like super overspun. They were very, uh, like very tightly coiled. And that part of the yarn was just unusable. And then you get other parts in the yarn where it was all fluffy and underspun. And that would fall apart easily because uh, the Karen Simply Soft is quite a uh, slippery yarn. And the fluff it's made from is no exception. So, I don't know, there was just more... It seemed like it was a 50-50 chance that you'd get one of those overspun or underspun sections in your yarn. And the number of knots seemed to be increasing. I contacted uh, the company and asked them about it, and they said for the Karen Simply Soft, this the industry standard was up to four knots before they would not sell that yarn, which, I don't know, when I heard that, it's like four knots in 300 yards? That's insane. Why no? 
industry standard might but it might be but um no crafters why would you put up with that right and that's just the knots i already need a tissue here that's just the knots and it doesn't account for those other problems so you might have four knots and an overspun section and an underspun section or two and so that's what four five six seven seven times you had to cut the yarn and uh, so 14 extra ends on top of whatever else you were doing that's crazy to me so i was getting more and more uh more and more skeins like that and i just thought okay this is nuts i need to find a replacement yarn i was going to i was hoping to use Bernat premium because i love that yarn it is so squishy and uh Oh, it's just so nice to work with. The finished project is always amazing. Uh, it's a little on the pricey side, though, so, ah. So I was thinking, eh, well, I don't know. And then Walmart had it on clearance for, like, half the price, half the regular price. So I got some, but I, it doesn't come in a ton of colors, which is a problem. Okay, that's a knot I can take out. That's not tying the yarn together. That would have come from my, um, the way I detangled the yarn. So I'm just gonna do this just a little bit. Anyway, the, uh, yeah, so the Bernat Premium, as much as I love it, it was expensive and it was hard to get all the colors that I wanted. Like they did, just didn't seem to exist. And I've heard some things about the in Loops and Threads Impeccable. I've used it a few times for like charitable things. Like it got the, the yarn got donated to a charity that I work with. And uh, I've worked with it. It's fine. It's not as soft as the Karen Simply Soft, but what is? And so I, I tried it out and I liked it. And it comes in a ton of colors, but it's also like a similar weight to the premium the Burnett Premium and to other worsted weight yarns. So I thought, I think this is what I'm gonna do. I live pretty close to a Michaels and uh, Loops and Threads is the Michaels brand. And so I thought that's, that's pretty handy. Although if the yarn doesn't go on sale very often and that's irritating. So I'm in the process right now of switching my main stash over I've been buying yarn specifically for the pattern samples in the Impeccable, and I'm saving the scraps. Uh, you may know that I design scrap gans, so those scraps will be used in future designs where the, the color, like, like my all squared away patterns, the ones that are, like, they don't have a name. There's just, like, all squared away baby two or twin six or something. Those ones are designed to be scrap gans. So you can use any colors, you can use up your little, your balls for that. So there's always more of those coming out. And I can use the scraps from the blankets that I've bought, uh, bought yarn for. Uh, the blanket I'm working on right now is supposed to look like a dog. I hope it does. I hope it looks like a dog. Um, I have already got one in testing right now that is the same dog, but just his head. Like you can see his head and like his collar and just a little bit below the collar. It's a cute blanket. I can't wait until it gets uh, released. And uh, I can't remember when it's going to be released. Let me just check my notes. Da, 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 da. Pattern testers. Ha! Huh. I haven't put it in my spreadsheet. Excellent. Let's go to the test thread. It'll say there. Okay, so the deadline for the testers is mid-June, so you can expect the, the small dog pattern to come out in June sometime. If they finish early, I like to release the pattern early. Uh, but I give them a, a, quite a bit of leeway for this one. If you would like to get a preview of my patterns before they're released, I highly recommend you join my Ravelry group. If I had been thinking, this is my first live stream, I know I could have put these links in the description and I forgot. So if you go to my page, there's a link 
at the top for my Ravelry shop, my Ravelry group, my Etsy shop, although uh, don't, don't buy my stuff on Etsy. I have the Etsy shop set up specifically just for people who cannot use Ravelry. Ravelry's cheaper uh, to list patterns on, and so my patterns are cheaper on Ravelry. So buy them there. And uh, like Ravelry, if you want to uh, use most of the site, you do need an account. But if you're just buying patterns, you do not need an account. You can shop as a guest and check out as a guest. Uh, Etsy has much higher fees. Like we're talking 5% roughly on uh, on Ravelry and like 25% on Etsy. So um, it's, I don't know, it's just so much more expensive to list on Etsy. So don't buy it there unless you absolutely have to. And if you absolutely have to, I'm sorry. It's the lowest price I can, I can manage. Um, another benefit to buying them on Ravelry is you will get an update if I update the pattern. So like say a year down the road, somebody finds something that the testers didn't, or if I have since made a video tutorial that relates to that pattern, I, I might update the pattern on Ravelry and then I can send, I can set it to send an email to everybody who bought it and they get the update. Etsy doesn't have a function like that. Etsy's not really set up to, for like selling digital files. It's like they set it up like the basics for it, and then uh, never looked at it again. <laughs> so, yeah. So buy on Ravelry. Uh, it, while you're there looking at the links, I also have a survey up right now. It's a Google form to fill in. It's got nine questions. None of them are required. Uh, I would greatly appreciate it if you filled that out. Now, if you go to my channel on the banner there where the links are, it's hard to see because the icon for it is a transparent, um, it's like a sphere with like grid lines on it in black. So it's hard to, it's hard to see, but it's up there. There's four links there. The three of them are orange and one is almost invisible. The almost invisible one's the survey. And uh, I would super appreciate it if you could fill that out. Uh, for those who follow me, who play, hang on, I need to go back to YouTube, make sure it's still working. Yeah, for those who follow me on, oh, hey, yep. Uh, the people who follow me on uh, Ravelry know that I play the Harry Potter game. Um, just so you know, I loved the Harry Potter books when they came out. I worked in a bookstore. Uh, around the time the, I want to say, third book came out. And, you know, I wanted to see what all the hype was about, so I got them, and of course I was crying with everybody else at the last book. And I am quite disappointed with what I've heard about the author since and have decided, just for myself, that I don't want to send her any more money. But I do play a Harry Potter-based game on Ravelry, it's not associated with her and it doesn't cost anything. Like none of my money ends up in JK Rowling's pocket because of this game. It's, it's basically, it's a role-playing craft along game where the role-playing part is where it's set at Hogwarts and you're a student. I just find it's uh, it's great for getting projects done. So if you like the universe, and even if you're upset with the author, which I very much am, uh, it's a fun game to play. It lets you pretend to be a student and get some crafting done. And uh, I don't know, I just like it. For example, this blanket I'm making now, this dog blanket, or this blanket that looks like a dog, uh, is for Quidditch, hopefully, if I get it done in time, which I'm on track to do, but you never know. Uh, if you're looking for this game on Ravelry, you're going to look for the, what is it called? The Harry Potter Knit and Crochet House Cup. I'm a Gryffindor. <laughs> uh, I just, I get a lot of projects done that way. And a lot of uh, my pattern fans are playing the game. 
So won't you join us? Let's see what else. Yeah, I'm sorry I haven't done a pattern update, like a shop update post since, uh, I want to say eight, uh, November. Yeah. There have been quite a number of patterns I've released. There's quite a number coming down the pike. Uh, if you go to my Ravelry shop, you'll see them. Uh, let me just go now. Maybe I can describe them to you. If I go to... Oh, I have 110 designs. Uh, open a new tab. And date available. All right, so the most recent release was Lapgan 7. All my Lapgan designs are a... Every time I nah, how do I say this? Every time I sit down to design one of the lapgan blankets, I aim for 36 by 48 inches. And I'm sorry, even though I'm Canadian, I, I don't know how to convert that into centimeters in my head. So Google it, please. Um, let's see, there was so I did lapgan seven. Uh, there's also baby 24. I can't remember how big that one was. I want to say 40 something inches square. I do have a spreadsheet for that. It's called the ASA database. Um, when the live stream is over, I will put links to this there. Let's see. What did I say? Baby 24? It's about 47 inches square. Oh, something new that I added to the ASA database. Um, First of all, what is the ASA database? It has a list of all of my all squared away based patterns. And there's quite a number of them now. And it shows you how many of what size square you make. Now, I recently uh, decided that I was not going to design with one round squares anymore. It's pretty annoying to work with as far as the design work goes, the way that I draw the, the schematics. But um, also people don't like making them. <laughs> uh, so you'll see a few blankets in the spreadsheet that do have one and two round squares in them. Uh, the one round squares were from before I made this, this, this executive decision. And the two round squares... A lot of them predate this decision as well, but some of them are, if you see them in the newborn blankets, that's because the newborn size blankets are such a small, um, a small canvas to work on. And uh, I think two round squares aren't too bad. I do, I have um, customers who are fine with doing two rounds. Uh, one of them tests for me, so that's nice. It's quite fast too. And yeah, so you'll see them in the newborn blankets after the decision was made, but generally speaking, the one and two round squares are just in older patterns. Now, I do have one in testing right now called the All Squared Away Ultimate Scrap Gan, and the large version of that has one and two round squares, uh, but that's because I designed that in 2015, and I had it in testing, and it didn't work out very well, but I didn't know what I was doing at the time. So I put it back into testing, and it's going to be released this year, I hope. But I'll just apologize in advance for all those one and two round squares. The thing about that design is you don't have to follow it the way that it says in the pattern. You can skip the ones and twos. Um, I'm going to add some language to the pattern to sort of explain exactly how you do that. But the, the testers for now are having to do one and two round squares, including me, because I'm making a new sample in the impeccable yarn and its equivalents. The original was made in the Karen Simply Soft. Ah, thanks, yep. And the, I just, I don't feel good promoting that yarn in my patterns. So I actually have a list in my work notebook here of patterns that I want to redo first in, in this style of yarn. And then I can change the pattern, at least in the Ravelry database and on the Etsy listings, I can change the recommended yarn with 
uh, a better knowledge of how big you can expect it to be because this yarn is thicker. Anyway, I wish, does it tell me how many? Oh, it does, okay. No, I think that's how many characters I have. Does it tell you how many uh, people you have in chat? Oh, I can look at participants. Okay, but that's ever, okay. Anyway, let me just see. I've got 21 of these squares done. I need 34, so, okay. Uh, so this is how I generally work on an all squared away blanket is I make a bunch of squares in the same color. This design just happens to look like something, but if I was using scraps, I'd make a few in different sizes, see what I could get out of the, the scrap ball. And once I had a few done, I'd weave in the ends. So I think I'm just going to make this square and I'm going to weave in the ends. I've got quite a bit left in the ball. Just thinking this yarn is not a great like eye-catching color for a video is it except the other color I have for squares in this blanket are is it like gray <laughs> I've uh... anyway so let's see where can you find me Ravelry of course um, you can find me in my Ravelry group it's called Fantastic Mio and that's where you'll see uh, threads for all my tests. And uh, we just finished a mystery crochet along. I just posted the last clue yesterday on Monday. And uh, yeah, the, the blankets coming out are looking great. Okay, I just heard my cat jump down. She might come scratching at the door. Uh, she has a perch near my office that she likes and she makes a noise when she jumps down but otherwise she's quite a ninja she's probably concerned that i have my door closed ah so let's see yeah so find me in my ravelry group um we have a good time there it's mostly for testing my patterns but Sometimes I have threads about um, other things. It's the first place that I post any coupons. Ah, speaking of coupons, you go to my Ravelry shop. If you buy three or more patterns at once, you automatically get 20% off. And that is entirely because of how PayPal fees work. Uh, PayPal charges a base amount plus a percentage. So if you buy those three patterns separately, then I get charged the base price three times. But if you buy them all at once, I pay the base price once and then the percentage. So I'm just passing that discount on to you. Oops. So another good reason to buy on Ravelry because you can get a discount. And automatically, you don't need a coupon code or anything. Uh, as far as the testing goes, all of my testers, I aim to get five testers for every pattern with the hopes that two will finish in time. And uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't remember where I was going with that. This year I'm trying something new with the deadlines. The deadlines are more like guidelines. Uh, if two people finish and I'm excited to get the pattern out, it might come out ahead of time. But that's okay. The testers still have until the original due date that I set to finish. And the reason why that matters is if you finish testing one of my patterns before the end of before the deadline that I set, you will receive that pattern for free plus any one of my other patterns for free. Uh, I wish I could pay these people, but I just... My business isn't at a point where I can afford to do that. One day, buy my patterns, let me hire people. <laughs> so let's see, actually I do have notes.
Okay, so we talked about Lafkin 6 having been most recently released. Before that was Christmas Stocking 1. Now I went at great length to say that I stopped designing with one round squares, but there's a bunch of them in the Christmas Stocking. It's just, it's such a tiny canvas to work with. Uh, but I mean, the benefit of all squared away is, and I, I normally don't recommend not weaving your ends in until the end. It's like, weave, weave them in as you go. Oh, I was gonna weave in that, oh well. Anyway, weave them in as you go. It's, it's an easier psychological hurdle to get over when you just have two ends to weave in than when you have hundreds. But if, with an all squared away pattern, if it's got one round squares in, you might wanna leave the ends to weave in until they've been joined into whatever it is you're making because then you'll have more real estate for weaving in those ends. It's just a thought. I'm looking forward to designing more Christmas stockings because that one was really fun. I actually came up with like four or five designs at the time and one of them was gigantic. I liked it. I don't know if there's a, I don't know if there's a, a market for three foot long Christmas stockings. I know I would have loved having one as a kid, but Maybe not, if Santa didn't fill it, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, let's see. Uh, just before that, I released Queen 3. That's uh, all squared away Queen 3. And uh, yeah, I, I like that design. It's actually, it's very similar to one of my uh, baby blanket designs. It's just queen sized. Mm, oh, and before that was Jacob's Sunburst. I'm hoping to do more with Jacob's Ladders in the future. I've got a playlist for Jacob's Ladders on my channel. If you've never done them before, they're lots of fun. They're super easy to do. Like uh, I would call them most Jacob's Ladder, pa uh, most Jacob's Ladders projects to be beginner. Like it won't be the Jacob's Ladders that make them hard. It'll be some other aspect of them. So the Jacob's Sunburst, however, and uh, here's the exception I was talking about, is a more advanced pattern because it's worked from the outside in. So you also need to be comfortable doing foundation stitches because your first round is the outside round and it's done using foundation stitches. There's a lot of them. I do have a video for foundation stitches though, so check that out. The pattern for the Jacob Sunburst has a link to all of the video tutorials for these things. So it's got one for, hmm, I just made the Jacob's Ladder one for beginners one. So that one's probably not linked in it, but the foundation stitches is. Um, how to start a Jacob's Ladder in foundation stitches is there. And how to brace your uh, Jacob's Ladders is also there. So the special techniques you need to make that blanket are linked. They do have a tutorial link to it in the pattern. Uh, newborn seven, I believe that one's got some two round squares in it. The newborn, the, the newborn blanket sizes are aiming for 30 inches square. Um, I would like to say also my newborn designs and my lapgan designs those started because of suggestions from uh, testers and customers and friends. They were, uh, they liked making the baby blankets, but they like one, she wanted smaller ones for newborns. And so we talked about what that would mean and I've been started designing them. And uh, somebody else came to me looking for lap gans because I think they were making blankets for uh, like a retirement home or assisted living maybe. So they were looking for lap cans for when people are in their wheelchairs or even if they're just in their chairs. And so we talked about what that would mean and then I started designing. So if you have any ideas like that as far as dimensions you are looking for in blankets, I am always open to suggestion. Got baby 24. I feel like we talked about that one already. It's just a largish square blanket. 
and then lap again seven. Oh, everything I said about then before that and then before that, that's wrong. I apparently did write these down in chronological order, not reverse chronological. So the last one that I released was lap again seven. I kind of wish I'd named these. Like this all started with, well, it started with the ultimate scrap can that's in testing now, which is kind of funny. Uh, but after that, I was doing uh, baby blankets and I did the first all squared away baby blankets, the first nine of them. And I just named, I just numbered them. Fun fact, they were supposed to be 10 of them, but I accidentally designed baby five twice. So check out baby five. It's, uh, it's a good one. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know, with my eventually granny square designs, I gave them all names. And sometimes those names are hard to come up with. I actually released a pattern at the beginning of this year, the end of last year, I can't remember, called um, Katie. And that was just me cribbing off my brother because that's his oldest daughter's name, my niece. I just, uh, it's not that the blanket reminds me of her per se, it's just that I couldn't think of a name, so I'm starting to use my nieces and nephews. Uh, I've only needed to crib once with the Katie blanket, but uh, if the next one, if you see a Maddie blanket, then I couldn't think of a good name. <laughs> Join my RAV group and uh, if you see, if you see patterns and you have a better idea for a name, I'd love to hear it. Okay, so I need some water. I've got my water bottle here. I made that cozy for it. Anyway, so currently in testing, I've actually got quite a number of patterns in testing right now. We've got Baby 25, which is similar in size and shape to Baby 24. I'm pretty sure it was a square. 40 something inches square, probably. Uh, we've got Lapgan 8 and newborn eight. And then we start getting into more of my all squared away blankets that look like things. Um, we've got football twin, which I actually could release now. My goal was to have that finished before the Canadian Football League started, um, only because the Canadian football starts before American football does. So I figured if I was in time for Canada, I was in time for the US. I wanted to, to release it just before the season started so you could theoretically work on the blanket and have it finished by the time the Grey Cup or the Super Bowl came around. I don't know, it's just a neat idea I had in my head. Um, oh, a note about that one. The vast majority of my blanket samples, the, the sample patterns, blah, what am I trying to say? The vast majority of the pattern samples that I make go to charity. Usually it goes to Airdrie Project Linus and uh, that's very satisfying for me but uh, every now and again they'll go somewhere else like my bigger blankets are harder to donate like the queen size and up. There's not a lot of uh, charities that are looking for those. Uh, I did just donate two queen-sized blankets to a Ukrainian family who had just uh, moved to my town or to my city uh, to get away from the war. So that was nice. If you live in the Calgary area and you know somebody, a uh, charity or something that's collecting blankets that are queen size, let me know. Uh, when I design an all squared away blanket that's that big, like for example, the Queen 3 that I released a little while ago, um, I actually, I make the squares, I join it, I take the pictures, I, you know, figure out the yardage and the measurements and everything, and then I pull the join apart and then use those squares to make smaller, more easily donatable blankets. Uh, but I do have like the eventually granny square ones you can't really do that on, so. I'm always looking for a place that will take them. 
another place that I've donated to is uh, the church I grew up in. Uh, my mom still goes there. They have a bazaar to raise money for various things, and I've donated things to that in the past. But coming back around to why I brought this up in the first place, this football blanket sample, I'm sending that to my mom. So it's one of the very, very few exceptions for that size blanket. But my mom loves football and it seemed appropriate. <laughs> uh, also in testing, I've got an all squared away blanket that looks like a, like has a heart on it. You know, just in time for Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I don't remember when that one's coming out. Let me just check. Uh, heart. Ah, well, it's scheduled for May, but I've had three tes bleh, I've had three testers finish, so it could come out sooner. Um, after that is the small version of this dog pattern, which we already said was in June, if I recall, and one that looks like a paw print. Um, the I see two. Two testers have finished that one, so that could come out any time. Uh, if any of this sounds great, uh, it sounds interesting to you, if you'd like it to come out early, let me know. I am amenable to that. If enough, if at least two people have finished, I feel comfortable releasing the pattern, especially if it's an all squared away or eventually granny square pattern. Because uh, uh, I use the same granny square pattern, like the, the written pattern in all of those. And I just supply that as so that you don't need to know anything coming into making these patterns. But if you already have, like you've seen me making these granny squares, if you already have a way you like to make this pattern, this, you know, your three groups of double crochets and whatnot, if you already have a favorite way of doing this, you can by all means use that technique. As long as in the end it looks kind of like this, It'll work in the pattern. Oh, I got a stack of five there, so I've got 25 squares. Uh, let's see, so after paw print, we've got the ultimate scrap gan in large and small. Um, the small is finished testing, but the we're still waiting on the large. And then tree queen, which is a Christmas blanket. It's a uh, at least my version, I had a green tree with a yellow star at the top and some multicolored presents underneath. Um, some of the testers, their tree isn't going to just be green. I made sure to put some three round squares in there so that they could make some of them not green to represent like Christmas balls or decorations and stuff. So I'm looking forward to seeing what those ones look like. Um, I don't have that on my spreadsheet because that's pretty far in the future when that'll come out. Let me see. Tree Queen. Where are you, Tree Queen? Oh, end of August is when that test is due. Right, that makes sense because I wanted to, because it's a, it's a very big blanket. It's queen sized. Um, so I wanted to give my testers as much time as possible while also giving my customers as much time as possible to finish it before Christmas. I do have a Hanukkah design in the progress, uh, but I believe Hanukkah is coming before Christmas this year, and I'm not entirely sure we're going to get it done in time because I've got testers lined up for it. I'm not quite finished writing the pattern. It's such a cool idea though, so I really hope it works out. It might just have to be your Hanukkah 2024 blanket. <laughs> We're hoping for 2023, but yeah. Um, what I like about it is the blanket itself, the, the it's all squared away. It's one of the ones that looks like thing, like something, and what it looks like is a menorah. And I am designing a flame uh, pattern, so you can make nine flames. 
and there's a pocket in the design to hold these flames when you're not using them. And uh, what you can do is every night of Hanukkah, the, the pocket is behind, you know how that center candle is higher than the others? The pocket for the flames is behind where the flame for that tallest candle would be. So it's like you're lighting your candles from that center candle. I don't know, I thought it was a really cool idea and um, I have some Jewish friends who are very excited about it. Uh, I need to get on that. Um, I really want to finish that blanket design before the end of the month so that the people testing will have a good four months to work on it. It's, it's a very large blanket. If you go on Ravelry, you'll see it in my project page. Um, on Ravelry, I'm Mio, M-I-O. And you can look at my projects there. That's actually a good way to see uh, what pattern tests are coming up to because even before I make the thread, I gotta make the sample first. Uh, hang on, I gotta go back to, just in case. Yeah. So what time is it there? How long have we been going for? Can I see that anywhere? I have to stand up. Oh, 41 minutes. Okay. I don't know. I might wrap this up soon. I'm running out of things to talk about. Well, I could talk about how I got into crochet in the first place. It was all Granny Square's faults. <laughs> um, back in, I want to say, the 70s. My mom made a granny square blanket in those glorious 70s fall colors. You know, the brown, yellow, orange, and olive green. And uh, she always had it on her chair. And around the same time, her sister, my aunt, made her one same pattern. It was a granny square, but it was in Christmas colors because my mom loves Christmas. And uh, I loved those blankets. I just, I was fascinated by them. It's like, how, how was this made? So I asked my mom and she said, well, it's crocheted. And she told me she made the one. And I said, oh, can you teach me how to do that? And she says, I'm sorry, but I've forgotten how. It's been, you know, decades. Um, so that bummed me out. I had a friend whose mom crocheted, who I was hoping to get to teach me, but that didn't work out. And, you know, at the time you went to a, if, I think at the time Michaels didn't have yarn crafting classes. I'm not sure if they had any classes, but they didn't have a crochet class. Not at every store anyway. And you go to a yarn shop and they didn't have it either. You want to learn how to knit, they got you covered, but they didn't have crochet. Uh, there was a lot of um, craft snobbery at the time where you go to one of these local yarn shops and they look down on you for crocheting. I'm so thankful that's not a thing anymore. It's like, I don't understand what you're doing. I'm trying to buy things from you and you're trying to talk me out of it. That's not good business. Anyway, I couldn't find anywhere to, to learn. So mom and I are at Michael's one day, years later, and I saw a CD-ROM. So this was in the 90s. Uh, I found a CD-ROM from, I want to say Coates and Clark, and it had videos and, to show you how to crochet. So I learned how to crochet from that video, and my goal was to crochet a granny square, uh, specifically a granny square blanket. Boy, did it take me years to get around to that. Uh, I'm just reminiscing. So this was clearly before YouTube. And yeah, so I learned some things from there. I, I did make a granny square blanket. It was just one big granny square. I had misunderstood the directions. If you've never made a granny square before, pay attention to the directions till at least round three. I paid attention until round two. And so I had 
the, the two chain stitches in between every group of, two, of double crochets. And that's not uh, what I wanted and I didn't understand what was going on. It's like these holes are gigantic. And anyway, I figured it out eventually. In 2014, I came up with the idea for the eventually granny square. Actually, it might have been before then. Now, 2014 was the all squared away. The eventually granny square blankets came before the all squared away. They were fun to try to design. But I'd seen this technique for continuous join as you go for squares, for granny squares. And I looked at it, it's like, that is neat. I like that. But then I was wondering, do all the squares have to be the same size? Uh, the answer clearly is no. <laughs> and uh, I think I've got about 60 all squared away blanket patterns now, or patterns in general, because we got that one stocking. No. So not only do the squares not have to be the same size, you don't have to stay in two dimensions, as the stocking uh, showed us. So I went, a bit, went on a bit of a granny square bender, thinking it would last, you know, a few months. Here we are nine years later. <laughs> And I'm not paying attention. I do not need four round squares. I need three round squares. Oh no, I'm doing three. Don't mind me. Okay, I think I'm going to wrap it up. My videos aren't usually this long. But I had some uh, good crocheting time here. I've got, what, 27, 28 of these rounds, the three round squares I needed. What did I say before? 30 something. 34. So. Yeah, I'm almost done with the dog color. I'll work on the background and hopefully this test will be up by the end of the month. So find me on Ravelry. Um, you'll find the link on my channel banner somewhere. Uh, check out the announcement. Uh, find my group. It's Fantastic Mio on Ravelry and check out the announcements thread for a link to that survey that's easier to see. Check out the tests and everything. Come say hello. And uh, yeah, I'm going to try to do another stream on Friday where I'll have all my looms and things because Friday is usually my loom knitting video. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.